everybody. It's week 10 of Freedom Quarter. I hope everyone had a really great Thanksgiving break, ate lots of yummy food, and maybe some of the hard times from this year felt a little easier just being around family. Even if it was just your immediate family, that's still awesome too. And I hope that you guys had a chance to rest and catch your breath a little bit. I know that we did. And maybe you got your Christmas decorations up. Mine aren't quite up yet. You can see my pumpkin in the background, but they will be very soon. I can assure you of that. So tonight, guys, we are finishing up talking about Holy Spirit. And we're wrapping up with something really exciting, talking about the fruits of the Holy Spirit. If we have Holy Spirit, in our lives and we're connected to Holy Spirit, there should be good fruit being produced in our life. Not apples and oranges and things like that, but spiritual fruit. So we're going to be learning all about that tonight. And we have an awesome object lesson and worship coming up and then our teaching. So stay tuned. It's going to be great, but make sure you have your prayer journals and your Bibles and let's go ahead and open up in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this time of rest that we have had this past week. And I pray that it was refreshing to their souls and that they are ready now to hear all about the fruits of the spirits. Their hearts are ready and um, they're ready to receive whatever you have for them tonight, Father. So reveal yourself, Lord, through your teaching, through worship, Father, and these object lessons. And may all the glory be unto your name, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so coming up next, object lesson. I'll see you there. Without you, I'd be 
everyone. I am so excited to be sharing with you guys this week. As you all know, we have been spending time learning about who the Holy Spirit is and what his presence should mean in our lives. So we've been talking a lot about Holy Spirit changes us and gives us new life, but some of you may be asking, well, I'm familiar with my sinful ways. I feel bad when I do still make those sinful choices, but I'm starting to feel the tug of Holy Spirit on my heart and I'm ready to start making new choices that please Holy Spirit. Praise God, that's awesome. So you may be wondering what new habits you should be looking to form now that you are new in Christ, which brings us to this week. We are gonna be learning about the fruits of the Spirit. And I have a story, which is straight from the Word, I wanna share with you today. And I hope that you enjoy it. So put your listening ears on and let's ask to receive the wisdom from the Word. So here we go. We're reading in John 15, one through eight. I'm the true vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. But apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my, dis my disciples. All right, so what have we learned from this story? Well, we've learned that we as Christians should produce fruit. God is the vine, we are his branches, and when we remain in Christ and ask for his Holy Spirit to come in and change us, we should see the old things fall away and God's fruit should be abundant in our lives. What if we called ourselves Christians, but we didn't live the way the word of God says we should? Well, then the fruit of our lives would show that we aren't really believers of Christ. But still you might be asking, okay, what should this fruit look like? Well, here's our verse for today, Galatians 5, through 23. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. Let's take a second to talk about this fruit and what each means for you. There's love, which means I will put God first and love others as myself. Joy. I will be content and grateful in every situation. Peace. Not giving into fear, but trusting God. Patience. I will wait without complaining and with a good attitude. Kindness. Be nice to everyone, even when they aren't nice to you. Goodness. Do what is right and pure and do it with pure and good intentions. Faithfulness. Keep pressing in for the Lord's sake. In gentleness, I will be patient and kind to others when they mess up. Self-control, I will resist some temptation and think before I act. If you call yourself a believer, then you should start to see this fruit in your life. And some of these might be easier for you than others, and that's okay. We continue to ask Holy Spirit for help. And you can also look to leaders and brothers and sisters in Christ and learn from them too. But if you truly wanna honor God with your life, and ask Holy Spirit to come in and help to develop this fruit in your heart, then God's gonna honor you. And he loves the willing spirit who's willing to learn and to grow. God doesn't require perfection, but he does ask us to try. And he asks for a willing heart to learn and to grow. And that might mean sometimes that we get disciplined from the Lord when we make mistakes. And he does that because he loves us, right? There are consequences to actions because he loves us, because he wants us to learn and he wants us to grow. And sometimes it doesn't feel good to be disciplined, but it said that the, the branches that don't bear much fruit, he comes in and he prunes them. That means he cuts away. So that can feel painful to have something cut away from you, but we can trust that God is cutting away bad habits so that we can produce more fruit, which is the fruit of the spirit. So tonight, as we close, 
I want to encourage you. Maybe some of these fruits you heard and you were like, oh, I really struggle with that one. I struggle with patience or I struggle with being kind. I struggle with self-control. And you knew it as soon as you heard it. You're like, oh, that one's really hard for me. I know that there are a few of those that I can think of that I'm like, that's really hard for Miss Katie. And I'm sure our leaders could share that with you too, that there is a fruit of the spirit that they struggle with. And that's why we keep asking Holy Spirit every day, Holy Spirit, give me more self-control. Give me more self-control. And we pray to the spirit and he helps us. And I want to challenge you today as we close to go to the Lord in prayer, pray to Holy Spirit. Remember we talked about how Holy Spirit is a person and he is listening and he can help us. And we need to go to Holy Spirit and ask for him to reveal these things in our hearts. So I want to challenge you to take out your prayer journal, okay? And in your quiet time, in your prayer time, I want you to ask Holy Spirit. Say, Holy Spirit, which of these fruits of the Spirit do I need more of in my life? Which one of these fruits of the Spirit am I lacking that I need to grow in? And He'll show you, He will show you. And you might have already known it instantly, but maybe you need to pray about it a little bit more. And even if you think you already know which one you're struggling with, still pray about it. And you might be surprised what Holy Spirit reveals. He might reveal something to you and you might go, huh, you're right, Holy Spirit. I am struggling with that and I didn't even realize it. So press in and ask Holy Spirit to speak to your heart. I love you guys and I'll see you next week for a brand new unit. Bye. All right, everyone, that concludes our Holy Spirit unit. I hope that you've enjoyed it. I hope you've learned about who Holy Spirit is, why we need Holy Spirit, and if we have Holy Spirit in our lives, then what should our lives look like? How should they be different than they were before? And what kind of fruit should we be producing in our lives? So um, I hope that you pray about this and that you seek more uh, truth in the word and ask Holy Spirit to reveal more to you from this unit because there is still so much that we haven't even covered about Holy Spirit that he wants to reveal to you. So ask him and he will reveal himself. We love you and we will see you next week for a brand new unit.